They broke through, it's on! Nearly half of the veterans charged in the capital siege were former Marines, despite their having served in the country's smallest military branch. It's not new to our country, and sadly, it's not new to our military. What is new is the speed and the pervasiveness with which extremist ideology can spread today. The stand down you're executing today is the Navy swarming against this threat. In response to the Capitol riot, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin ordered all U.S. military units around the world to stand down from their normal operations to address the domestic extremism threat. The reason we're doing this training is first to define it, why we're doing it, what, what's the cause of it, and how to prevent it. So if you see someone putting something that's extremist out there, that's a fellow Marine, it's now your duty to report it. Marine Company Commander Captain Alex Newham and First Sergeant Joey Cruz, the company's senior enlisted man, were tasked with conducting the extremism training and reviewing the Marine Corps' regulations with their unit, Fox Company 2nd Battalion, 5th Marines at Camp Pendleton, California. I first connected with Fox 25, also known as the Blackhearts, while embedded with their unit during the Iraq War, when the focus was more on defending against foreign rather than domestic threats to the Constitution as part of their enlistment oath. Support and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I mean, you already took the oath. I think the problem is not fully understanding what you signed up for. Sergeant Radcliffe Humphrey and three of his Fox 25 colleagues agreed to share their understandings of the domestic extremism threat within the military and their rights and responsibilities as Marines after their stand down training session. It included running through various scenarios and identifying possible extremist intrusions within their ranks. How many of you know what Pepe the Frog stands for or 88? I do. Yeah, Pepe the Frog was just the uh, internet meme that they utilized. Uh, you know, I think like the Proud Boys utilized Pepe the Frog memes just to make uh, dog whistle jokes towards the left. And 88 would stand for HH, Hail Hitler, other right wing connotations. Most of the training was based on the Pentagon's prepared outline of do's and don'ts as they applied to service members, political activities, and sharing extremist posts on social media. You could report it and or just not respond to it. And then whoever's posting that, obviously you can just be like, all right, I want to distance myself from this. Get rid of whoever's profile that is. Delete them as a friend, delete them as a follower, whatever you have them as. Get rid of them from your social media. Generally speaking, service members are allowed to have political opinions, but they're restricted from promoting them while serving. I'd be defacing the Marine Corps as a whole if I said my political beliefs, because it's not everyone's. My political beliefs aren't the same as these gentlemen's political beliefs. They're going to be different, just like anyone else's would be. Is it clear in your mind what extremism is? I mean, you know, one man's extremist could be another man's patriot. I mean, in this day and age, yeah, I would say that it, it could be hard for some. Um, but again, it goes back to the training that we're receiving now. The new directives on extremism prohibit identifying with extremist organizations, displaying their symbols like tattoos and bumper stickers, demonstrating on their behalf in or out of uniform, promoting any illegal activity or messaging, especially on social media. Given the sensitivity today and the training you went through, if a Confederate flag was spotted in your barracks or in your group, what would be done? Oh yeah, they're going to be uh, held fully accountable for uh, for their actions. They know they, they know what it stands for. They understand why they're putting it up. There's there's not going to be any question about that. And so they're going to they're going to they're going to face the man and uh, and answer for it. There's always going to be a lot of gray in this. It's not going to be totally black and white. And so, what's the commander's intent here? If in doubt, how do you think they're going to make the right call? Yes, sir. The commander's intent is that they are all informed of the training and everyone has the knowledge that they have. They they have the skill sets now. But honestly, the, the meat and potatoes is going to be from the squad leaders and the team leaders doing the small group discussions because we can't be everywhere at, all at once. Push it back in the center, push it back in the center. Given the intensity of their profession and interpersonal relationships, 
There is very little room in the Marine Corps for doubts over someone's loyalty and allegiance. Going out, boy! Marine Corps Crew Depot, Pass Island, South Carolina. From day one of getting off the bus at Marine Boot Camp, standing on the yellow footprints, giving up their personal items, and getting their heads shaved, Marines knew they were giving up much of their personal identities to become part of something larger than themselves. What it means to me is that you're being shaved from like your civilian life and you're joining this institution and you're going to uphold these standards. And on that same day when you were on the yellow footprints and they were saying, there's no black, there's no white, there's only green. Oh. Hoorah. <laughs> <laughs> does it stick? Is it it does. Can it, I would absolutely can it, say can it stand this test? It does. Absolutely. I, absolutely. Yeah. You're getting a whole new set of core values, honor, courage, and commitment. It's, it's pretty easy, you know. Just, as long as you follow those rules and you, uh, you uphold the life value and you take care of your brother the left and right and you uphold the Constitution of the United States like you promised you would, it's not going to be any issues. Semper Fidelis, always faithful. That's how Marines address each other. And it's also key to the Marine Corps' strategy for keeping extremism out of its ranks by keeping the focus on the bonds and allegiance that drew men and women to the Marine Corps in the first place. Everything that goes on out in society can definitely impact our service members. The difference is, is that if we continue to equip them and train them and educate them, um, They'll, they'll understand it a little better and they won't allow that outside influence to uh, really get in into what they have going on. The reason why that's so important is because, in, especially in our profession as infantrymen, we have to be able to look to our guys left and right and say, I know if we go to combat, this guy's going to have my back, no matter what happens. For the PBS NewsHour, this is Mike Saray reporting from Camp Pendleton, California.